so great to be here this morning with Francisco in his painting, inside his painting at the DMA and just a, a treat to be here and able to uh, talk with the artist and UTA alum about, about his piece, about the generation of it, the production of it, uh, and so forth. And, and while we're in here, it's just an amazing place to be all encompassed in a painting. And, and maybe we, we start with, with just talking about the chapel. Tell me about the chapel. So yeah, the chapel is an all-encompassing uh, painting structure inspired by a Spanish Romanesque uh, chapel I saw in Spain in 2016. I loved the experience and uh, when I saw it, in, um, I saw the original chapel in Spain, I knew I wanted to take this format and see how it would apply to, a contem to, to um, our kind of contemporary world. I had never experienced anything like that before, so I had my little, um, so I was at the Prado in Spain, I had my little pamphlet and had my pen and I measured the, the, the chapel, um, the hermitage of uh, La Veracruz de Madurero. I measured it with, uh, with my feet and wrote down the dimensions. Now this, this had to be so encompassing, I couldn't imagine. Uh, how long did this take? So it was a, uh, since, the, since I had the idea, since I made the, the Google SketchUp mock-up in 2016, it, it was then a year of me getting my ducks in a row to figure out how to make it and then a year of painting. So two years, um, two years of me being in here laboring and then, oh sorry, one year of me being in here laboring with a, a year before it of planning and figuring it out. I, I look around and I see so many art historical and contemporary references. Uh, let's jump into that and maybe tell me about some of the inspirations or references and, and maybe what you were thinking as you were creating this piece, as you were inside. As an artist, you, you're, you end up as a painter in my case. Uh, I am very influenced by visual culture. Uh, and part of visual culture is uh, painting history, right? So uh, having studied painting, you become really interested in the history of kind of um, that focus. So I loved looking back through time and seeing how painting has existed and, uh, and how it still seems somewhat relevant. And, and it became a really interesting experience to pull from so many different uh, uh, visual elements and see how they would exist together. I think what's really fascinating about being a painter today is that uh, you can get on the internet and I mean even like Google Arts and Culture a lot of museums put their collections online right so uh, you know back when uh, Velasquez was learning to paint in Spain he only really had the royal collection to look at now we can look at everything, right? So uh, how do we process all this information? I mean, it's kind of overwhelming, but it's also incredibly fascinating. We have such an amazing access to, to so much history nowadays in our phones. That was definitely inspirational to, to, to how, what I wanted to explore in the chapel. And you see, obviously, I think things from um, The Last Judgment in there, is that that? And some Aztec or Mayan figurines. Is that, um, do you, are you thinking about your Latino heritage at any point when you're painting some of these things and, and how, how much does that come into your work or how conscious of you? You know, I think what's fascinating is that, you know, I, I was born in Mexico, grew up here, would often go back. So w something that I really want to communicate in the work is this, th this kind of sense of being uh, transnational or uh, or aware that it's not just one culture centric I think when I grew, I grew up I kind of came of age here in, in DFW so I remember feeling like um, like a true culture I, I don't know how other another way to explain it but uh, I, there's so many different elements and all these elements kind of are a culmination of, of, of a culture or a heritage and I feel like it has to have everything for me for it to feel authentic and for it to feel pure because it, my experience is that of everything from like Mesoamerican to Eurocentric to, to European inspiration. You know, take me back to when you were creating this and, and how much obviously you had to do a lot of planning. 
but maybe I wanted to start in, in that with, with the imagery and, and how you maybe curated it down to this, what the thought processes were as you were painting it, you know? I fell in love with the space in Spain and I wanted to build the structure and paint inside of it. So it was pretty much a three-dimensional canvas, right? I didn't really know what was going to go inside and that was a purposeful um, decision because I, I had done a, a large project uh, in 2015 called the WCD project which was kind of a reimagination of Washington crossing the Delaware and I, I, I mocked that project up in Photoshop and I pretty much just executed that project and, and at, at that point I felt almost like a machine because I just projected the image and I painted. So when I started working on this project I really wanted it to develop naturally and organically. I, I wanted to respond to the images as they were coming about which made it a little bit more difficult because you don't really have um, a strict plan to work off of but it became, it felt more pure because you know you'd paint an image and then you know you experience something that day and you'd come back the next day and you think oh I was going to put this thing here but no actually I'm going to do this uh, I'm going to uh, this other element seems more um, true to 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 how I feel you know I mean it's so I guess the intention the intention was like I know what I want to do but I still had a, a, a amount of space for improvisation which is and for intuition to come into play because it's a balance of both. Right. I see a lot of like repeated patterns and, and marks and I know in the documentary that you produced about the making of this, uh, you had a reference to Alabrijas. Yes. And I got really interested in Alabrijas when I went to Oaxaca for my first time and, and met uh, the Angeles and was just blown away by the intricate details and uh, symbols and patterns that go into that now you were inspired or that kind of drove you to make some of these things maybe talk about that a bit yeah so um for those of you that don't know alabrijas are like kind of like these like um little wooden sculptures made by artists in mexico i think they started early 1900s and there are these this i forget the i think it's maybe I, i'm not going to say the name because i'm going to get it wrong but this guy had this vision of this mysterious monster and he's like woke up and carved it and um and then he painted and then is it and then he just like with these very with his very tiny brush painted these intricate patterns and i think what i loved about it was the idea the notion of the artist working on on these objects and like it, it was a way for me to uh, really appreciate kind of the production of painting like when we'd go to Mexico, you would see you see these artists making these these alebrijes, and I think it's such a beautiful thing. And I was like, how do you communicate that, like in a way that's not that? That's a, kind of like my own interpretation of it. And w what I wanted you to come in when you walked into this space, I was in love with the idea that you could kind of look at the painting and then you could see like these little brush marks. So like even, everything we see behind us was uh, the final layer was painted with a tiny, you know, zero round brush. So, I mean, for all of you visiting, I recommend you, you come in and look it up, look at it closely because it wasn't something that was um, painted quickly or gesturally. It was something that was very kind of time consuming and a labor of love. Now, when you finally finished that last brush mark, was it a, a, a feeling of satisfaction? What was the feeling that you had when you completed something of this scale? Yeah, it felt pretty good. <laughs> it felt good. You know, I think, um, I mean, th this project was a leap of faith. And I mean, there were times when I was working on it where I questioned my sanity. Like, why am I doing this? Um, uh, I, I guess I'm very fortunate that I had a lot of great support throughout the way. Um, met a lot of great people and that's something really fascinating about these projects is that they, they end up being so big that you really can't do everything yourself. You do have to reach out to, to people to help you. I mean I had uh, really great friends who are architects, David Dross and Lance Rainey, that kind of helped me figure out um, some structural components. Um, they introduced me to a lighting designer, Jill Clores, who is an amazing person and helped me figure out the best way to light this piece. I worked with a, a craftsman, uh, Seth Lorenz, who helped me 
uh, I could not build the, this beautiful arrow slit window. I designed it, but I couldn't build it. So you begin to really outsource um, certain parts and, uh, and, and when you're working on something this large. You know, I'm thinking about the fresco that you must have seen in the Prado. And we typically see these frescoes richly painted. And we're looking at yours and there's a little bit of color, but it's mostly black, white, and gray. When I, when I was working, like I, I knew I wanted there to be a color component to the, the way that you experience the work, but I also knew that figuring out the color, because color is a very complicated thing, um, to figure out the color would have been just, I don't think I could have done it in the time that I had. So my strategy was to lay a foundation of color. So the first layer is, um, this was all like the first layer of the chapel was almost this huge abstract painting. So if you look behind a lot of this imagery, you see these fields of color, which I would then like kind of clear coat and then paint on top of. And I think something that the, color, that the lights do that we haven't really talked about, um, these lights are really beautiful LEDs. Um, they pool, kind of the color from the back and bring it forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that, that was a very like, uh, you know, I, like I think when you, when I was working on this project, it's like, okay, what are my parameters? These are my parameters, this is what I'm, this is what I'm gonna work with, right. you know? And I think that that's what this, this does that's different than the, your standard painting on a wall, that it is really immersive when you come in here and are just kind of hit with all of this um, imagery from, ancient art to, to the present day. And it's really just amazing because I think about, well, how do you make painting three-dimensional? How do you take it out into space? And I think you've really done this in a way that I wouldn't have considered looking back to art history and being moved by that particular experience. I can't help, you know, I'm positioned here to see this middle finger with the bald eagle perched on top. So the, the middle finger was something, of the, one of the first things I painted in the chapel. And it was, one of the first things, because I feel like it freed me up to paint whatever. I wanted something that I've struggled with is kind of like, oh, and, and a lot of artists, friends as well, like you feel like you're holding back, like, oh, like people aren't gonna like this, or a gallery's not gonna like this, or like curators aren't gonna like this, or my friends aren't gonna like this. And then I didn't wanna have that weight with the chapel. And you know, a chapel is the religious structure. Right. Um, so by painting that middle finger, that was like one of the first things I painted that middle finger and, um, and I wanted it to have that honesty and that sincerity and, and, the, and the humor. Like, I, I, like there's a monster truck flying through the air. Like, I, like that, the humor is also a very huge component to, to like this project, right? I guess lastly, what I'm interested, you know, what's next for you? What's the, what's the next big project? Because you seem to move from one to the next, and I have to think that you've got something moving around that headspace. Right now, I'm making tiny paintings. That's what's keeping me interesting, and that's what's keeping me interested. Um, but for the future, I would like to build another chapel. So um, that's all I'll say about that. It'll be, a little bit, it'll be a little bit bigger than this one. Well, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. We can't wait to see it, so we'll have to stay tuned. Excellent. All right. <laughs>